Your doctor has recommended an exam of your prostate with a transrectal ultrasound and prostate biopsy. Before we talk about this procedure, let's review some information about the prostate and why these tests may be necessary. The prostate is located under the bladder and behind the penis. It is a walnut-sized gland that is part of the male reproductive system. It helps make semen. The urethra is a tube that carries both urine and semen to the penis. It passes through the prostate which surrounds it like a donut. If you are scheduled for this procedure, your surgeon is concerned that you may have prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer found in men. At most risk are men age 50 and older and those with a family history, especially a father or brother with prostate cancer. But at highest risk are African American men and men over age 70. Usually there are no early signs of prostate cancer, but some men have problems with urination or pain that warn a physician that more testing is needed. Prostate cancer screening can help physicians find prostate cancer early before a patient has problems and include the Digital Rectal Exam, or DRE, where a physician examines the prostate for lumps by placing a gloved finger in a man's rectum, and Prostate-Specific Antigen, or PSA, is a blood test ordered for some men based on their age and risk factors. Routine PSA testing is not recommended after age 70. A prostate ultrasound with biopsies is done to test for cancer when a nodule or lump is felt. It is also done for a high PSA and for some problems, especially with urination, that can be a sign of prostate cancer. With an ultrasound, your surgeon is able to scan and measure the prostate without x-rays or radiation. The ultrasound also guides the needle used to biopsy your prostate. The tissue biopsies are sent to a pathology lab for examination. The next steps for your care are discussed after the procedure and with the final lab results. This may take one to two weeks. If cancer is found, the lab will give the tumor a number called a Gleason score, which is a grade of how abnormal or aggressive the tumor cells look. DNA gene testing is commonly done on the tumor cells as a new way to measure how aggressive the tumor is. This is different than a cancer stage which is based on where, how large, and if the tumor has spread. Treatment decisions for prostate cancer are based on many factors including a patient's age and general health, the cancer Gleason score, DNA results, and stage. A biopsy can be false negative. That means the biopsies did not find prostate cancer that was there. 30% of men with prostate cancer, about one in three, will have normal biopsy results from the first procedure. A second procedure with more biopsies is done to search for prostate cancer if a PSA stays high and cancer is strongly suspected but was not found with the first set of biopsies. Sometimes MRI, magnetic resonance imaging technology, is used with the ultrasound to help find or target a tumor for biopsy. Ultrasound-guided prostate biopsy tends to be a short procedure, available at many hospitals, and is the most common procedure used to biopsy the prostate. MRI technology uses magnetic coils to get detailed information about the prostate and possible cancer. MRI is very expensive, takes longer to do, is newer and still being studied, is less available, but is helpful in managing difficult cases. Now let's talk a little more about what happens during a transrectal ultrasound and prostate biopsy. To start, you are positioned comfortably. Most patients are awake for this procedure. 
An ultrasound probe is coated with lubricant gel and gently placed into your rectum. The gel helps the probe to be more comfortable for you and is needed to get clear ultrasound pictures. The size and shape of the prostate is checked and measured by gently moving the probe near the prostate. Numbing medication is injected near the prostate to decrease the discomfort of the biopsies. The ultrasound probe is used to guide a needle biopsy device to take about 12 tiny pieces of prostate tissue. You will hear a snapping sound with each biopsy. After the biopsies, the ultrasound probe and needle are removed. This procedure is done as an outpatient. That means you will go home the same day as the procedure. Tell someone on your care team if you have unexpected pain, dizziness, or trouble breathing. You may have some discomfort, but this can be controlled with the medications recommended by your physician. It is normal to see a small amount of blood in your urine and bowel movements for a few days, but it may last one to two weeks. Your semen may be bloody or a different color for several weeks or months after the biopsy. Serious risks of the procedure are infection and bleeding. Call your doctor if you cannot urinate, have a fever, worsening pain or bright red bleeding that doesn't stop. Rarely, hospital admission for antibiotics or blood transfusion are needed. To avoid cancellation or complications from the procedure, your job as the patient is to follow your surgeon's instructions carefully. Before the procedure, stop aspirin or blood thinners as instructed. If stopped too soon, you risk getting a blood clot. If stopped too late, you may have extra bleeding with the procedure. Use an enema the morning of the procedure if instructed to and arrive on time with a support person. It is also important to follow instructions after the procedure and take antibiotics as prescribed. Restart your aspirin or blood thinner after the procedure on time you should be ready to verify or confirm your list of medical problems and surgeries, all of your medications, including vitamins and supplements, current smoking, alcohol, and drug use, and all allergies, especially to medications, latex, and tape. All interventions, procedures, and anesthesia have a small risk of serious injury or very rarely death. If you have questions about this procedure or need further information about alternatives, ask your surgeon. This video is intended as a tool to help you better understand the procedure that you are scheduled to have or are considering. It is not intended to replace any discussion, decision-making or advice of your surgeon.